Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to episode two of the Freshman 15 podcast. I am back alongside Tyler Moore, breaking down the college football scene in about 15 minutes. So Tyler, what's up, man? What's going on? Not too much. How are you doing today, man? We It's Monday, week one, three days away. So ready to get this, yeah. this podcast, this, this bad boy going. So man, week, uh, no, episode two, right? Yeah, Ready episode two, out. yeah. So you feel like a big deal yet? You feel like a celebrity yeah. online? Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I was right on my prediction, so we'll, we'll get into that later. But I, I, I mean, I told, I told y'all, if you, if you listened, I told y'all like three days before, like, yo, they were gonna win, so. You did, you did. So, <laughs> I mean, it's a big week this week. It's a lot going on. It is the official, official week one of the season. Yep. And uh, you know, what I wanted to do was initially to kind of look back on last week, week zero. Mm-hmm. And just talk about what caught us off guard, but you were never caught off guard by one game in particular. So let's show everybody the clip that you're talking about. Go ahead. Uh, you know, week zero, there's only 11 games. There's not much to it. You have uh, Northwestern versus Nebraska in Dublin. Uh, you got those weird Scott Frost quotes, whatever he's doing. He's bragging about making his players throw up, but it's whatever. Uh, Northwestern is going to beat Nebraska. So how did you come up with that prediction? So you you were confident the whole time that it was an L for Nebraska. So how did you come up with that thought process? Where did that kind of come from? Yeah, man. Like, well, ever since, uh, you know, Scott Frost has been in Nebraska, you know, he it, it hasn't been like the best tenor he had. But dating back to last year, he was six and he was oh, he's, they lost the last six games. And he was he's, now he's five and 21 in one point. <laughs> I mean, one score <laughs> games. So it's just like. You know, and in the and North Northwestern, Pat Fitzgerald is always going to have that team ready. They're not like the best team, but they're they always usually play up. Like a couple years ago, they beat Ohio State, uh, so they they usually play up and they always have a good defense. So, I mean, I just, I, I just kind of knew. <laughs> Go feeling told you, yeah. So they got to get embarrassed in a whole nother country. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was funny watching that game how they controlled the tempo of the game, and then mm-hmm. Nebraska gave it right back. Yeah. So like you, you felt kind of assured that okay, Nebraska they got this. You know they're by eleven onside kick happens all of a sudden oh, you know it kind of goes crashing down man. But from last week though in week zero did anything at all besides that game did anything else kind of catch you off guard or catch you by surprise? Uh, so catch me off surprise it probably would have been uh, Vandy. You know they they beat Hawaii sixty three to ten, uh, and yeah. basically yeah. I mean they they took control of that game and it's it's. You know, they they had a dual threat quarterback now. He was 146 yards passing, 165 yards rushing, uh, but 63 to 10. And that just kind of shows you like, you know, Vandy, you, when you hear Vanderbilt, you see Vanderbilt, you're like, oh, that's a bottom feeder in the SEC. And then, you know, and then they go and play Hawaii and they just blow them out by 53 points. And the game was basically over in the first half. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, same for me. The exact same thing, because I think we talked about that game early, kind of being excited to watch the game. Yeah, uh, it's you know late night. It's the only thing on TV, so you're gonna watch yeah. it and get like you know hope for some late night fireworks. But uh, yeah, man, I mean them uh, blowing the doors off Hawaii. Yeah, that's the. I mean, it's a bad look. Like you said, Vandy has that that mantra. Oh, they they suck. They're you know trash in the SEC. But then they wipe out Hawaii, and the game was like maybe a nine and a half point favorite. So it went to to shit early, and then to lose like that, we had Timmy Chang as the first year head coach. So you mm-hmm. thought they had some kind of swag going in there, some kind of like, you know, some hype and appeal. They get smashed by 53. It's just a wild ass ass whooping that I didn't see coming. I mean, yeah. it's like going to the zoo and getting your ass beat by a gorilla out of the cage. Like they got the asses whooped. Yeah. Um, caught me off guard, man, honestly. Really caught me off guard. Uh, but the shift focused real fast. Uh, who in week zero either hurt or helped themselves out in a big way? Oh, it's Scott Frost. I mean, <laughs> I mean, so you, so after this game, uh, even before this game, you know, it's, it's uh, people are already asking about Urban Meyer. Hey, can Urban Meyer come to Nebraska? It, even if it's yeah. just joking or not, it's being brought up. You know, yeah. It, it, yeah. another him going to another major school. I doubt he ever goes to Nebraska. But you you have two 11 point leads. You blow two 11 point leads. One of them you you have an 11 point lead and you kick an onside kick, and then yeah. that basically yeah. that that basically flips them back around. You know that changes momentum completely. And then their quarterback Casey Thompson was just like. And he was doo doo butter in the second half. That's, that's the only way to say it, man. Yeah, he was doo doo butter. Yeah, man. They, they they lost their way in that game. They really mm-hmm. lost their way, and they allowed them to control the, the entire pace of the game on the ground. It was because okay. to be honest, though, with Northwestern, you watching the game like, okay, this is really conservative, but it was a effectively conservative. Yeah. You know, because they had plays where it was like third and ten, third and eight. Okay, try to put the ball in the air. 
And Helensky was actually playing pretty well too. Like Helensky was on point. Yeah. Uh, but they got both running backs going in the game. Yeah, Helensky kind of not taking chances in that, enough. But it seems like they knew what Scott Frost was going to do. They knew he was going to fall into their laps. And yeah, like you said, it, you're preaching for Urban Meyer of all people in Nebraska. It's yeah. it's bad. Like it's it's gone pretty bad. Yeah. So like the so in the first half, both, both Thompson and Helensky, they played like it was like damn near perfect quarterback play. Yeah. And so then in the second half, uh, you. The, you know, you had those 11 point swings or whatever, but uh, I think that really changed when Northwestern introduced their second running back. Uh, I think his name is Parker. Uh, mm -hmm. But once he came in, he was like that change of pace back from Hall. And then they were one, two punching it. And he then, the, you know, Holinsky was just taking his shots uh, when he had to. And like you said, it was super conservative, but extremely effective. And that's the way Northwestern's played that kind of football for 15 years. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're not, they're not going to blow you out of water. They play three deep man coverage all the time. They only, they only send four guys. They never blitz. And they, they, like, you know what's coming and they still beat you, so. Yeah, and the game just fell back in their laps, it, it seemed like. Yep. So, I mean, but, but on a positive note, as far as who helped themselves out, uh, it's week zero, so it's very quiet, not much going on. Uh, but one player that stood out to me was Chase Brown from Illinois. Yeah. Um, huge day on the ground. 150, eight yards of carry. They, they rolled to a big win, or easy win at least, yeah. uh, with Wyoming. And he's making a push of shame for the Doak Walker Award. I gotta see more out of that. Maybe it's a little bit early so far, you know, for that kind of talk. But a big splash in a week. There's there's nothing else going on, and the guy rolls out with 150, two touchdowns, a huge win, and I mean, he put himself on the map with that. So a big shot to Chase Brown for looking pretty good, man. Yeah, and it, you know, Brett Bielema, that's the way he played at Wisconsin. You you always knew what was coming. I mean, Wisconsin's always been a run, you know, a run for school. And you, so you you know what's coming when when you're playing a Brett Bielema offense. Even, even when he was at Arkansas, it was kind of that way. It was a failed, it was failed. But I mean, it's Big Ten football, so yeah, it's just a different place. Big Ten football, <laughs> right down the throat, man, right yeah. down the throat. 100%. So looking forward finally to Week One, the true Week One of the college football season. Uh, our Saturday spotlight. What game are you watching the most closely? I think I know which one it is, but go ahead. Well, I'm gonna I am not gonna say I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say Ohio State Notre Dame because that one that one's <laughs> kind of the obvious one. What I kind of want to see, and this one is, you might have this one too, is Oregon versus Georgia. Yeah. Now, Oregon's <laughs> new head coach is Georgia's old defensive coordinator. Yep. And Bo Nix is their quarterback. And so I think he know he's gonna know Georgia. You know, Georgia, they they have basically superior talent at, at all positions. Um and you know they just reloaded their defense like they they probably didn't have a drop off at all so mm -hmm. i'm excited to see how his familiarity with their defense and and bo nix from auburn the familiarity with georgia how they're if they're able to keep it close because right now it's supposed to be a 17 point game it's huge it's, it's huge. 17 point game yeah and so if they if they can keep it close there at the end with a high-powered oregon offense then we'll see we'll see what happens but that's yeah. the one that i'm looking forward to same here so most definitely <laughs> I, I knew it. I knew it when I said it, but it's all good. Um, and I looked at it, I'm thinking about the tight end Ferguson. Because like you said, they may not be a drop off for Georgia, but I feel like we have that many guys leave mm -hmm. uh, to the NFL. There's got to be a drop off somewhere with the experience, communication, somewhere. So a guy like Terrence Ferguson could be in for a huge day. I mean, he's a very high level skilled tight end, could go off, have a monster day, eat, I mean, get fat all day long. So uh, you mentioned Bo Nix. Um, I've been kind of hesitant with Bo Nix. He's had some underwhelming games, even against Auburn himself, you know, mm -hmm. from early on. So I think maybe the change of scenery helps out, but I'm still not sure about him. Uh, but I also think on the other side, uh, with Stetson Bennett, he may have a hard time because this Oregon defense yeah. might be very, very good. I think they've had a pretty good recruiting class the last few years. Yes, they have. So, I mean, just look at him. You got Brandon Dorless, Noah Sewell, the transfer from Colorado, uh, Gonzalez. Like, they've got a got a playmaker on the outside now so yep. i think that makes for a good game like you said 17 is way 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 too high of a spread um it's close but that's the game i'm on a spotlight but i won't leave you short so i know you want to talk about ohio state northern dame go ahead man go ahead okay well i, I wasn't going to talk about him but i will talk about him so when it first when the game was first initially announced beginning of the year the spread was only third i think it was 13 i'd say only 13 yeah. but 13 and now it's grown to 17 and a half with still you know a couple of games ago. so now it's officially a three a three a three score game uh that's what they're what they're saying and i said they were going to win by 21 so 
I mean, that's three scores. So we'll see. Well, I mean, I, I, I just think that Ohio State's too high powered for for Notre Dame. Talking that talk, man. Talking, <laughs> talking some big talk, man. All right. So last week, I think unbeknownst to us, we had our uh, upset specials, our upset alerts, right? Yeah. Um, so I, if I'm correct, I think you had Tech over Clemson in Death Valley. I had Florida over Utah. Or yeah. do I got it twisted? No, no, no. So I, I went back and looked, and they're actually playing at, uh, at the Mercedes-Benz Dome. And I was kind of okay. confused because the Georgia game is also at the Mercedes-Benz Dome. So they're playing there like, uh, I think it's, yeah, so Saturday night and then Sunday. I think that Georgia Tech game is Sunday or Monday. I can't remember which one. But they're playing there as well. So that, that's what kind of threw me off, uh, that, they're, that they're playing at the same stadium. But yeah. It's, so Okay. So you have Clemson, the road team, going to Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech, yep. in Atlanta. Yep. Are you still standing by that one? <laughs> okay. So yes, I am. And the point spread right now is it's twenty two, <laughs> and that's what that's the line right now is twenty two. But like I said, like I said last week, Georgia Tech, uh, they hired their coach four years ago. He's only won three games in his past three years, so he's got a whole new coaching staff, a whole new offense brand new quarterback who's running like a high school style offense now uh i don't know if they're gonna go i don't know if they went back to the triple option like they used to when they were more successful in the mm-hmm. acc uh but i just can't trust a cl- that clemson quarterback because he wasn't very good early last year and georgia tech took him to the wire last year mm-hmm. so it, i don't know if he's gotten better they also lost uh you know brian brian venables he went to Oklahoma is their head coach, so they lost their D coordinator. Is that guy? Is that new D coordinator? Was was he doing enough there to step right in and pick up where where Venables dropped off? Um, so I mean, if if this coach is like, hey, if I don't if I don't you know if if, if I'm not good here, I'm gonna get you know my my, my seat is very hot early. So I don't know. We, just... we might we might see it, and it, it. I mean, that could be the upset that that swings everything. So that's a tall ass task, though. Like, that's what you get. It's just, it, I mean, look, I see it. Could it happen? Absolutely. And like you said, Clemson, the program is kind of, they kind of staggered out the gates the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, like you said, they, they don't recover. They take yep. a major L. They never bounce back. But Georgia Tech, though. They, they took them to the wire last year. So. All right, man. You know what I'm saying? Upset alert. So hit that that button on the upset alert. Hey, man, if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm one and one on this one. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So, you know what? I'm going to still stick it out with Florida over Utah. And it looks a little bit lopsided even looking at it from the way they're set up. Uh, Florida struggled last year to find their identity on offense. Um, the quarterback there is kind of on uneven footing as well. But I feel like them with a new coach, a new culture, and again, that environment of playing and on the road. And Utah, as the same with Georgia, in my opinion, losing a lot of starters in the front seven, losing a guy like Devin Lloyd for your upfront, your communication, your leadership, to me is a big deal. Mm-hmm. And having to replace that in a game like that to go at Florida on the road, it's a big deal still. So playing in Griffith, I'm going to say I'm going to stick by my upset pick, my upset special. I'm going with Florida over Utah. Just how I see it. Yep. Do you see who the biggest point spread is this week? Who's that? You Utah sure. State versus Alabama. I think it's 49. 49 <laughs> points, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone else is playing tough week ones, and then you have – Alabama doing doing their thing. So, well, look, man, they they need, need a tune-up game. I think it's fair. I think it's a lot. I, and people feel like those things are unfair, or they're lopsided, or they're bad for college football. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, there's no preseason. What do you expect? Yeah, I, I agree with that. But what I what I don't like Ohio State. Yeah, they play against. Um, I think they have Arkansas State next week, and then Toledo. But then like then it's all basically Big Ten. Big Ten teams, mm-hmm. and then you you look at you look at someone like Alabama who throws in Austin PB right before their, <laughs> you know, right, right before the rivalry week. So it's just like, yeah, that's like an extra bye week for them because Austin PB is not gonna, yeah, <laughs> they're not gonna challenge you. You can play the you, know, you can play the third and fourth string guys who you know, and they're gonna beat them. So it's whatever. But this is why I love games like Appalachian State, and Michigan from 07. This is why yeah. I love Jackson State pushing Florida State, even if only in the interim or the temporary process. I, I love the games like that because you never know. Now, yeah. it won't happen to Alabama. I'm sure it won't happen to Alabama. <laughs> but you never know, man. You, you never know. So, I mean, it remains to be seen, man. But we got a lot of fun stuff, man. Even for next week's show, I'm sure we will see a lot more as far as what happens next week. So we'll see our, our Heisman watch. We'll see what happens there with 
you know, the guys like B. John Robinson. We'll see what happens with the uh, USC. So it'll be a fun weekend in the uh, in college football, man. Fun slate right here that yeah, we got coming absolutely. up. Man. So, yeah. man, before we wrap the show, man, any uh, thoughts? Go Yellow Jackets. <laughs> Cold as shit. <laughs> all right, <That's> guys. <laughs> so, all right, that'll do it then for the night, man. So, for my co-host, Tyler Moore, I'm LP Cruz, and this has been the Freshman 15 College Football Podcast. Peace. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.